Good day, students. Uh, welcome to part five of the New York uh, Regents High School exam for integrated algebra. Uh, we're going to be going over questions 26 to 30 of the August 2012 release questions, okay? Remember, this document is accessible online on the nysedregents.com website. All right, let's take a look at uh, question 26. It says, what is the solution of um, 2, 2 over, over x plus 1? equals x plus 1 over 2. All right, so we can solve this by eliminating the fractions, the denominators, sorry. So to eliminate the denominators, one easy strategy to use here is just cross multiply, okay? So when you cross multiply, the denominator gets multiplied by the numerator on the other side of the equation. So the bottom left gets multiplied with the top right, and then the bottom right gets multiplied with the top left okay so you just multiply across like that that's how you cross multiply all right so let's go ahead and do that when I cross multiply I'm going to end up with the uh, with the equation 2 times 2 equals x plus 1 times x plus 1 okay multiply these we have 4 and if I pull this out I'm going to do uh, first outer inner and then last. If I carry out that multiplication, I'm going to have x squared plus x plus x plus 1. All right? Simplifying further, we'll have 4 equals x squared. These two middle terms are like terms, so we combine them plus 2x plus 1. Okay? Now, this is a quadratic equation, so to put it in standard form, I have to set it equal to 0. So I'll uh, do that by subtracting 4 from both sides, so I just have zero on one side, all right? Using the reflective property of equality, I can switch this around. I'm going to have x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals zero. All right, so now you have a quadratic equation. You can solve it by factoring using the quadratic formula uh, or completing the square. Give a graph. I'm going to use a method called, I'm going to use a factoring method, the AC method to do this, okay? So AC method involves creating this x game. I'm going to put AC on the top, A times C, and then B on the bottom, all right? So uh, there's no coefficient for my x squared, so my A is going to be a 1. That's a multiplicative identity. That's A, B, C. So AC goes on top. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and B goes uh, on the bottom, which is 2. So what two numbers multiply to give you negative 3 and add to give you 2? Let's try 1 and 3. So the difference is positive, the smaller has to be negative, okay? So putting that in, I'm going to have x squared minus x, 1x, uh, plus 3x minus 3 equals 0. I just inputted these two values into the middle term. These two combine to give you that, all right? So I didn't change the problem. I just I'll set it up into four terms so I can factor by grouping, all right? Now I'm going to break down the first one, the last two. From the first, I'm going to have x times x minus 1 times x. And in here, plus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. From this, uh, the first two terms, I can factor out x. And then from the last two terms, I can take out 3. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have x factored out. I'm going to be left with x minus 1. Plus, I'll factor out a 3. I'll be left with x minus 1 equals 0. Okay? Now, since these two quantities, x minus 1, are the same, I can factor them out as x minus 1 times, and I'm going to be left with x plus 3. So those two left on the outside together uh, equals 0. Okay? So, am I done? Do I have my answers yet? Are my answers negative 1 and 3, as option 2 suggests? Absolutely not. We're not done yet. We have to use finish it off. Uh, so what we do is use the zero product property to set each factor to zero. So I'm going to set x minus 1 to zero, and then, then x plus 3 to zero. So these are the two solutions that I'll get. All right, so on the left side, I'll add 1 to both sides, and I'll have x equals 1. And on this side, I'll subtract 3 from both sides, and then I have x equals negative 3, okay? So those are, these are my two solutions. Uh, to satisfy the equation 1 and negative 3, okay? So our answer is option number 3. All right.
Let's move along to question number 27. All right, so the total score in a football game is 72 points. The winning team scored 12 points more than the losing team. How many points did the winning team score? So let's start by declaring our variables first so we can create a system of equations, okay? So let, let w equals um, points scored by, by uh, the winning team, w for winning, by the winning team, and then let uh, l be points scored by the losing team, okay? All right, now um, let's set up an equation. First, we know that the total number of points scored is uh, 72, so I can say the number of points scored by the winning team plus the losing team equals 72, okay? I'm gonna call this equation one. Now, I, I know that uh, the winning team scored 12 points more than the losing team, so that tells me that the winning team uh, equals the losing team plus 12. The number of points scored by the losing team plus 12, since the winning team scored 12 more, all right? So that gives me equation two. Now, since one variable is already isolated, I can easily solve this by uh, the method of substitution, all right? So I'm gonna use the substitution method here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, take the value of W, which is L plus 12, and I'm going to, from equation two, and I'm gonna plug it into W in equation one. Okay, I'm gonna plug it, substitute it in right there. All right, so let me go ahead and write down what I'm about to do and then I'm gonna do it. So what we're gonna do is substitute, substitute L plus 12 for W in equation one, okay? So what does that look like? Uh, it's gonna be, instead of W in equation one, it's going to be, I'm gonna put it in green so you can see, L plus 12 uh, plus L, equals 72, okay? All right, so let's simplify this. Uh, L and L are common terms, right? So I can combine those two. I'll have two L plus 12 equals 72. Now to get L by itself, I'll get rid of 12 by subtracting and divide both sides by two, okay? So subtract 12 from both sides, and then I'll have two L equals 60, and then divide both sides by two, I'll get an answer, L equals 30, okay? So is that my answer? This is the number of uh, points scored by the winning team. Let's look at the options. We have 30 here. So after doing all this work, some uh, might get tempted to say, oh, yes, I got the answer and select option number one. But guess what? That's a trap, okay? 30 is a point scored by the losing team. The question asks for the point scored by the winning team, and we define that as W, okay? So you have a little bit more work to do. All we just have to do is plug in this uh, 30 into one or two to get W, okay? Since W is explicitly solved for in two already, that will be the quickest equation, although one will also work. All right, so to be efficient, we're going to do the following. We're gonna substitute, substitute 30 for L in equation two, okay? So that's gonna yield W equals 30 plus 12, 30 plus 12 is what, 42, and that's the number of points scored by the winning team. So the answer to our question 27 is two. All right, moving right along, question 28. It says, what is the perimeter of the figure shown below, which consists of an isosceles trapezoid and a semicircle? Now, um, let's see, we have an isosceles trapezoid and a semicircle. So uh, let's see how we can figure this out. <laughs> okay, so I created my own uh, isosceles trapezoid in a uh, semicircle here. So what we're basically looking for is the extremity, okay? So we're looking for this side right here, that side, that side, and then the semicircle, okay? So figuring out the perimeter around p the pieces of the uh, isosceles trapezoid is, is not difficult. The complicated part is figuring in, figuring out this piece right here, so the semicircle, okay? 
So on the trapezoid segment, all we're just going to do is we're going to add 4, 6, and 10 to figure out the top, bottom, and the left side. So um, perimeter is going to be um, P of tra trapezoid section of trap trapezoid section plus P of semicircle. Okay, so this is the trapezoid section right here, and this is the semicircle. So if you have the trapezoid section is going to be um, <clears throat> let's put it here, P of trap section. Now that's going to be four plus six plus ten, which is uh, four plus six tenths twenty. All right, so that's the distance around here. Now what is the perimeter of a semicircle? Perimeter of a semicircle. All right, so what is that going to be? <clears throat> All right, you're not provided with the um, area formula for on your reference sheet, so you need to know that the area of a circle, the area of a circle is, what am I talking about area? Sorry, <laughs> circumference or the perimeter. Perimeter or circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, okay? So what is the circumference of a semicircle going to be? It's going to be half of that, right? It's 2 pi r divided by 2 because you're going only half as long, which is pi times the radius, okay? So the perimeter of this semicircle is going to be pi times r, which is half of 2 pi r. So the question is, what is the radius of this semicircle here? Okay, because I know from here, I know if I go from here all the way there, this entire length right here is... Um, this entire length is pi r. And the question is, what is this r? r is what? Okay. So to, <clears throat> to figure this out, uh, I have to take advantage of the fact that this is an isosceles trapezoid as indicated here. So what is the isosceles trapezoid? What does that mean? It means that the two sides are congruent. So this side is congruent to that side. Okay. So that means this entire length is six units long. So from here all the way here is six units long. So if that's the case, what's the distance from one endpoint to the center, also known as the radius? Well, the radius is half the diameter, and I know that the diameter is six, so it follows that the radius, which is from here to here, r equals three. So that's a nice piece. That's what's going to help me find the, uh, the circumference of this uh, semicircle, okay? So the perimeter of my semicircle is pi r, which is equal to uh, pi times the radius, which is 3, which is 3 pi. Okay? This is how you write it, the number before pi. So, hence, the perimeter of the figure is simply going to be 20 plus 3 pi. All right? So there you have it. Okay, moving right along, question number 29. It says the probability that rain tomorrow is one half. Let's write it down. Probability that the rain is one half, and then probability that uh, the that uh, that our team will win. Probability of winning the game tomorrow is three fifths. Okay. So it says which expression represents the probability that it will rain and that our team will not win. Okay. So. Um, what we are asked to find is P, probably that it will rain, and, and is, oh, don't forget, whenever you have and, you multiply, okay, and is multiply or is add, and probability that it will not win, okay? So you remember that probabilities always add up to one, right? So either you win or you don't win. In that case, you have a draw or you lose. So if probability that you win is three-fifths, what is the probability that you will not win? All right, let's uh, represent this using the pentagon so that we can really understand this whole idea of, pro of probabilities. So that goes our pentagon, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into five equal pieces, and then we're going to uh, consider the pieces that represent winning and losing, okay? So then we have our pentagon. We have five uh, pieces. The reason why I chose five is because the denominator of my winning probability is one fifth, is five, okay? So each of this segment is one fifth. Okay, so one over five, one over five, one over five, 
1 over 5 and 1 over 5. Okay? All right. So what represents probability of winning? Probability of winning is 3 fifths. So this 3 slice fifths right here, these ones represent P of winning. Okay? So this is probability of winning. This entire segment right here is probability of winning, uh, which is 3 over 5. So since this piece represents probability of winning, what does that tell me about the other piece? The other piece is probability of not winning. So this other piece right here, which is 2 fifths, is probability uh, that you will not win. Probability of not win, which is 2 over 5. Okay? Instead of drawing this, another way you could have done it is probability of not win is also the same thing as probability that you win or not win minus the probability that you win, which is 3 fifths. You can do the math. This is 5 over 5 minus 3 over 5 equals 2 fifths. Okay? So this is what we're using probability that will not win. All right, with that in mind, um, our answer is going to be probability of winning is 1 half times probability of not winning is, the, is what you get when you subtract 3 fifths from 1, which is 2 fifths. Okay? We just have to set it up here. We don't have to do anything more. So let's see. This matches with option number 4. Okay? So our answer is option number 4. Now, moving right along to the last one, question 30. It says the volume of a pyramid is one third base times height. What is it? What uh, what is h expressed in terms of d and b? So all this question is asking me to do is isolate h, okay? And whatever is resulting on the other side of the equation will be uh, in terms of d and b because those are the only other two variables, okay? So how do I isolate h? Well, let's get rid of one third and b, okay? So let's deal with this fraction first. How about I divide both sides by one third? Okay? That looks like a mess. I don't like that. What's an easier way to do it? Uh, an easier way to do this is to multiply it by the reciprocal. Okay? So I can multiply the reciprocal of one third, which is three over one, both sides. Remember, multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as dividing by the same fraction. Okay? All right, so now you notice that the three divide out. Three goes here one, three goes here one. And on the left side, we're going to have three V equals dh, all right? Now, to I finally isolate b, I divide both sides by a big b. And I'll have uh, h, using the reflective property of equality, this b is divide out. I'll have h equals 3v over b, okay? And there goes your final answer. That's option uh, number three. So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here so you can get uh, updates to other parts of this uh, review series. If you like this video, feel free to click like down here. And please, please, please post a comment to tell me what you think about this video. More videos can be found on mattgurdserve.com. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.